When it comes to diagnosing valvular stenosis, not all imaging tools are created equal. That's why the American Society of Echocardiography, or ASE, has laid out clear, evidence-based guidelines to help us assess valve disease accurately and consistently. These methods are divided into three recommendation levels based on strength of evidence and expert consensus. Let's break them down. Level 1 recommendations are your gold standard. These are the methods that are not only appropriate but strongly recommended for all patients with valve stenosis. They're your go-to, first-line tools, reliable, proven, and central to routine clinical evaluation. They include 1. Mitral valve area by planimetry, wherein you directly trace the valve opening from the parasternal short axis window, MV level. 2. The mean pressure gradient, which is obtained using pulsed wave Doppler across the mitral valve. 3. Pulmonary artery systolic pressure, which is estimated using the tricuspid regurgitant jet, meaning the continuous wave Doppler is sampled through the tricuspid valve, typically in the apical four-chamber window. And lastly, pressure halftime, which reflects how quickly the left atrium empties into the left ventricle. These tools not only confirm the diagnosis, but help classify the stenosis as mild, moderate, or severe. For example, a mitral valve area greater than 1.5 square centimeters is usually mild. Around 1 to 1.5 is moderate. And less than 1 is considered severe. Level 2 recommendations are for when the level 1 method doesn't give you the full picture. These tests are used selectively often to clarify more complex or borderline cases or to guide further decision-making when echo findings are unclear. Level 3 recommendations are not advised for routine clinical use. However, they may still play a role in research settings or rare clinical situations, especially when other imaging methods aren't available or are inconclusive. Let's dive deeper into our second level 1 recommendation, mean pressure gradient. The mean pressure gradient is calculated by the machine for you using the Bernoulli principle. We start by using the continuous wave Doppler, placing the cursor through the mitral inflow, typically from the apical four-chamber window. Make sure you're looking above the baseline, since blood is flowing up towards your probe, from the left atrium to the left ventricle. Once you've lined it up, freeze the clip and trace the mitral valve velocity time integral, or MVVTI. This will give us both the MVVTI and the mean pressure gradient. It's also important to report the heart rate, since gradient measurements are flow-dependent. Now, if your patient is in atrial fibrillation, which is often a consequence of mitral stenosis, you'll want to average five cardiac cycles due to the irregular rhythm. Remember, in AFib, there's no coordinated atrial contraction, so you won't see an A wave on the Doppler tracing, just a series of irregular passive flow patterns. We have an example on the right, where the mean pressure gradient across the mitral valve is 21 millimeters of mercury. That value falls into the severe mitral stenosis range. Note that a mean gradient less than five is considered mild. Between 5 and 10 is moderate, and anything greater than 10 is generally classified as severe. And that wraps up our deep dive into mean pressure gradient, second of the four essential level 1 ASE recommendations for assessing mitral stenosis. Click the link above to watch our full video on mitral stenosis evaluation. Thank you for watching. If you found this helpful, please support us by liking the video and subscribing to the channel.